San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. The White House just signing off on federal emergency assistance for Western New York, now recovering from one of its worst blizzards in decades. Well, we are learning about the dozens killed and the transportation impacts this morning. San Antonio Spurs pull off a nice win against the Utah Jazz last night, but not before the AT&T Center was locked down. What police are saying about the situation this morning? 35 degrees. Hey, we're above freezing right now. Sarah Spivey back in. Will we hit freezing this morning? And things are going to warm up later in the week. She'll have a forecast for us in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is December 27th. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you. How was your holiday? It was great. Did a whole lot of football and uh, unwrapping gifts, and that's just about it. What did Santa bring you? Uh, let's see here. Um, Nothing big, big. Uh, I'm going on a cruise later this year. Oh, OK, that, that's a little big. I mean, but that was my <laughs> gift to her. So oh, okay. I'm always excited about gifts that I could participate show in. Show you worse. It's Santa. It's OK. I, you know, some people have to be. Yeah, it was a good Christmas, and I hope you, your Christmas is good as well. Uh, Sarah and Sarah, we're here doing every single newscast that we have throughout <laughs> the entire holiday weekend. They're going to get a break at some point, but not today. Not today. <laughs> not today, because, you know, the weather is important today. We're once again going to be seeing a light freeze early this morning. You know, temperatures are temporarily above freezing in San Antonio right now, but take a look out toward Kelly. It's, it's at freezing right now. JBSA Randolph, 33. We've still got a couple more hours here for the temperature to fall. And so I think here in San Antonio, even though it's 35, just before sunrise, we should see a morning freeze for our fifth morning in a row. 29 in Kerrville, where it's below freezing, 30 in New Braunfels, 32 in Pleasanton. Anywhere you see this pink color on the map, that's where temperatures are at or below freezing. It's 33 in Uvalde, 38 in Del Rio. A lot like yesterday, today we're going to warm up under mostly sunny skies. Around noon, we'll be in the low 50s, and in the afternoon, 60 degrees. We'll have winds gradually turn to the south at five miles per hour. Now coming up, we're going to talk about how the forecast over the next couple days. It's all about the dew point. I'll tell you what I mean coming up in just a bit. Mark, Sarah. Sarah, thank you very much. Now to that winter storm this claimed dozens of lives and caused major problems at airports. Even at San Antonio International, they're showing at least 28 departure cancellations and 25 arrivals also canceled so far today. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, President Biden has approved federal aid for the hardest hit areas as they brace for another day of sub-freezing temperatures and snow. Federal emergency assistance now on the way to a western New York currently crippled by more than four feet of snow and bracing for more. Certainly it is the blizzard of the century. The Buffalo area reporting at least 29 storm related deaths, more than half found outside and more than 500 have been rescued from extreme conditions. I heard him screaming for help. This woman credits quick thinking neighbors for helping her get this man suffering from apparent severe frostbite to an emergency room. Buffalo is banning travel on its now treacherous roads and its airport is remaining closed until at least Wednesday. It's been catastrophic. It's been a failure at every level. The Department of Transportation now looking into Southwest Airlines canceling of more than half of its flights Monday and Tuesday. This one started west, swept east and impacted uh, almost every single one of our largest airports that put us in a position where we struggled to recover. System wide airlines canceled more than 36 hundred flights Monday, stranding passengers across the country. My daughter's in New York City all by herself, you know, very sad. It ruined our Christmas. And scientists caution extreme winter weather could become more common, finding climate change is leading to a rapid warming of the Arctic, which can play a role in driving frigid air farther south into the U.S. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a security scare at the AT&T Center last night led to a lockdown and a delay in the Spurs Jazz game. It was delayed by 30 minutes after the AT&T Center. Surrounding parking lots and roadways leading to the county-owned facility were placed on lockdown. Happened just after 7 p.m., over an hour before the original tip-off due to a potential security threat. Bear County Sheriff's Office confirms that uh, officials were alerted to a trash can that forced Bear County Sheriff's Office and NBA security to execute the shutdown protocol. After an investigation, it was determined there was no threat and the lockdown was lifted.
Now to updated information on the boil order notice affecting subdivisions in Bear, Bandera and Kerr counties. In a statement from the Texas Water Utilities, they say the freezing temperatures this week caused a high water demand leading to line leaks, which in turn resulted in a drop in the water pressure. So on your screen right now are those places that are impacted. The other counties affected are Kerr and Bandera. Nearly 2000 households are affected. Some areas are having their water tested right now while others have to wait until the water pressure level is restored before testing. So people who have questions regarding the order are asked to call that number that is not on your screen at this point, but that number is 866-654-7992 to read the full statement from Texas Water Utilities along with updates on each subdivision. Just head to our website at ksat.com. Well, this morning, the White House is blaming a politi politically motivated stunt for migrants being busted in sub-freezing temperatures to Washington, D.C. Three buses carrying more than 100 migrants from Texas arrived this past weekend outside Vice President Kamala Harris's home at the U.S. Naval Observatory. In a statement, Governor Abbott's communications director said the migrants signed a voluntary consent waiver upon boarding. The governor has said before that migrants are being bused to cities that can more adequately provide assistance to migrants and ease pressure on smaller Texas border towns. The holiday shopping season for Mega Millions lottery ticket buyers at least is ramping up. As officials say, the estimated jackpot for tonight's drawing has surpassed half a billion dollars. So far, lottery officials estimate the prize is at 565 million or more than 293 million if delivered in cash. That's after there were no lucky winners holding a ticket that matched all six numbers in the last drawing, which was held on Friday. Tickets sold in California and Florida for an October 14th drawing shared the last Mega Millions jackpot of 502 million. So the record Mega Millions jackpot is more than 1.5 billion one back in 2018 and a jackpot surpassing 1.3 billion was one in Illinois in July. It's on my list to grab a ticket today. I thought of it during Christmas Eve services, you know, while we were talking about the birth of Jesus and everything. You know, I was thinking, oh. don't forget to get a Mega Millions ticket. You know what? We're at least you're honest, and I appreciate that. Merry Mark. Christmas, everyone. 437, 35 degrees. Spurs getting that much needed victory against the Jazz last night. What Keldon Johnson says was the deciding factor in the win. Expecting light traffic this early this morning. Few cars out there, 37 and Jones Avenue as we get GMSA started. And let's take a look outside with live cam. 35 degrees at 437. You ready for a warm up later? Oh, I am so ready. And Sarah Spivey says things are going to get real warm. Not real warm, but compared to what we've been dealing with. Really warm the, compared to that. In the next couple of days. We'll be right back. 440, welcome back. Travel woes continues. We've been saying lots of problems at airports across the country this morning. Last check of the San Antonio International Airport flight track or more than two dozen Southwest flights either coming to or departing from San Antonio have already been canceled. A mess across the country. Mm -hmm. Our Max Massey joins us live from inside the airport. So Max, how does it look out there? Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's kind of underwhelming. There's not much of a line. We're at the Southwest Gate, and this was the only... No, y'all can come through. You're good to go. We don't want to mess up anyway. So we know it has been a mess across the country and here in San Antonio. Yesterday, hordes and crowds of people filling up the airport, but this morning it is calm and quiet. We actually talked to, to one woman, a mother, she actually right, just went through, just right there. And uh, she was telling us, you know, yesterday was a nightmare for her. It was kind of scary. She lives in California. Luckily, she has family here, so she was able to stay in the night. But now it's kind of a, a crapshoot. She's going to Phoenix, and she's going to try to get another flight from Phoenix to California. And, you know, you guys alluded to it, even scrolling through the, uh, the flight tracker, it was weird seeing any flights from Southwest that were actually coming in on time. Now, that being said, the U.S. Department of Transportation, they did tweet something out that they were investigating Southwest. So I'm going to read that tweet to you right now. They said, uh, quote unquote, U.S. DOT is concerned by Southwest's unacceptable rate of cancellations and delays and reports of lack of prompt customer service. The department will examine whether cancellations were controllable and if Southwest is complying with its customer service plan. Now, Southwest actually posting something on their site you know, saying we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and please know that we have all available hands on deck working to serve our customers. But this investigation and the apology, 
not making this any easier for families who just want to go home. We're going to stay here throughout the morning, keep you uh, informed if any information becomes available. Guys, back to you. All right, Max Massey live at San Antonio International. I had a bunch of family traveling, different spots around the country over the holiday weekend. Nobody got where they were supposed to get. Um, oh, on time no. or at all. That's how bad this storm was and, and how many flights affected. And I, everyone is going mm -hmm. through. And we're still playing catch up and here it is Tuesday morning. Right. 442, 35 degrees. And now is the a prime time for online dating. Oh, is it? Okay. Up next, a first look at three major things you can do to help you meet that special someone. So believe it or not, this time of year is a busy time for online dating. Gio Medinitas has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, we are heading into peak dating season. From being set up to meeting IRL in real life to meeting online, there are countless ways to try to meet your match. But for 38-year-old Marissa Skolnick and 44-year-old Matthew Burson, their friends used a Facebook mommy group to start a spark. Basically, we're like, it's time to settle back down. They decided to play matchmaker. And they said, do you care if we post on your behalf? And I said, sure. Matthew's best friend showed him the post about Marissa. From the description, it was really, it was really a fit for me. Uh, the picture was the icing on the cake. Although they didn't imagine meeting this way, they believe it was meant to be. And coming up at 7 a.m., relationship expert Bella Gandhi has three major tips to help you meet that special someone. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Former Spurs assistant Will Hardy, second youngest head coach in the NBA, making his first trip back to the AT&T Center as head coach of the Jazz last night. Spurs off to a fast start. Trey Jones gets ahead to Keldon Johnson for the easy bucket and six-point lead. Spurs lead grows late in the first half. It's 63-56 Spurs at halftime. In the third, Spurs sharing the ball. Devin driving to the hoop, then behind the back pass to Trey for the corner three. Kelvin finds Jeremy Sohan along the baseline. He slams it down for a 17-point Spurs lead. Kelvin in a sharing move, fouling Malachi Branham in the far corner for a three, and the Spurs leads up to 20. Jazz cut that lead down to four late. Trey Jones responds with a floater in the lane. Goes up off the back of the rim and in. Spurs up six after a Jazz three. Jones attacks the rim, gets the impossible layup off the glass to seal the win. Vassell led the Spurs with 24. Keldon chipped in 21. Spurs hold on to win 126-122. We continue to have each other's back through thick and thin of the game. Um, and, you know, like you said, we persevered and, and came out on top. I feel like um, they're a good team. I um, mean, you know, the good teams make runs. And, uh, you know, we withstood their run and, um, you know, we won a game. All right, next up, Spurs travel to Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder. Tip off tonight, 7 o'clock at Paycom Center. We know a lot of people are going to be also traveling back home today. Um, I know I have in-laws that are be going back to Corpus. Uh, we didn't have any incidents yesterday, another big travel day. Yeah. Uh, still still very early outside, and Sarah Spivey says, you know, we're, all, we're fortunately... The roads in Texas have been very clear and no travel issues across Texas on the roads. Yeah, we shouldn't have any kind of precipitation across the state of Texas really until Thursday. So if you're planning on hitting the roads or you have loved ones planning on hitting the roads today, across Texas it should be fine uh, on the roadways. Now across the air things are a little bit different because as one system leaves you can see that there's still some snow, lake effect snow out near Buffalo, New York. That system is leaving the United States. There's another system in its wake that's just now starting to move through the Pacific Northwest. This is already causing delays in some airports across uh, the Pacific Northwest, like at Seattle and even Los Angeles uh, International experiencing some delays right now. Uh, so uh, again, check with your airline before you have to go. This is going to cause some more headaches today travel wise as far as the weather is concerned. But as Sarah was mentioning, clear skies really across Texas, no issues on the roads as far as the weather goes around Texas. Outside 
outside right now it is chilly. It's 35, but we're just above freezing here in San Antonio. We expect temperatures to dip to freezing just before sunrise here. Winds are from the northwest at about five miles per hour. Humidity is still pretty low. Dew points are in the 20s. Now, as we take a look at temperatures elsewhere, it's 28 in Kerrville. Good morning in Yavaldi. It's freezing. It's 32 in Yavaldi. 32 in Carissa Springs, 38 in Del Rio, 32 in Pleasanton, 30 in New Braunfels. It's 36 in Seguin, 39 at Stinson and 32 at Port SA. Again, temperatures should drop a degree or two before sunrise here. In the future cast, yeah, this is a loop of what's going to happen today. Sunshine, that's our forecast for you during the day. You'll notice the winds gradually turning to the south at about five miles per hour this afternoon and high temperatures in your neighborhood. We should be right near 70, uh, 60 degrees rather. 57 in Seguin, 57 in Converse, 60 in San Antonio, 57 in Bernie, 59 in Castroville, and 57 in Kerrville. So a couple degrees cooler than yesterday, but still a pretty pleasant day. And your KSAT 12 hour forecast uh, shows that right around sunrise freezing in San Antonio, but by 10 will be in the mid 40s. By noon will be in the mid 50s and then 60 degrees for that high temperature this afternoon around 3, 4 o'clock. All right, let's talk about the humidity. Uh, the dew points are going to drive our forecast over the coming days. Right now, humidity is still very low. Dew points are in the 20s, which is at the bottom of our scale there. This dry air still in place from that Arctic front that moved through on Thursday. As we look at the future cast dew point, notice how when winds turn from the south, we start to see humidity return. Uh, dew points are going to be back in the 50s and 60s by Thursday morning. So what does that mean for us? Well, early tomorrow morning, I do anticipate some areas of patchy fog. You can see that clouds return early tomorrow morning. It should start off fairly cloudy, 35 degrees early on your Wednesday. And then by Wednesday afternoon, Clouds are going to play a huge factor in how warm it gets in your neighborhood. East of San Antonio, the clouds should stick around. High temperatures will be closer to 60 degrees. West of San Antonio, it's going to be near 70 degrees with plenty of sunshine. And notice that San Antonio is right on that line of sun and clouds tomorrow. So if you see sun, expect temperatures in the 70s. If you see clouds, expect temperatures closer to 60 degrees. Then looking ahead, there's only a small chance for rain on Thursday. We're going to talk more about that coming up during the five o'clock hour of GMSA, but take a look at New Year's Eve weekend. Looks pretty good. Temperatures in the 50s in the morning, afternoons in the 70s on Saturday and Sunday. Notice that again, that small chance for rain on Thursday, about 20%. There's other parts of Texas that have a much better chance for storms on Thursday. That could affect travel as well as people start to head home. And when we say that we see that 75 and 76, uh, you're saying the dew point. So it's going to the, the humidity is not going to be a problem. It shouldn't be humid. Uh, well, it shouldn't be noticeably humid outside on the weekend. Okay. Just bring on some warmer temperatures. Time yeah. for a break. Something a little closer to normal around here. By this weekend, that Arctic air is going to be a distant memory. Fantastic, <laughs> at least for the time being, right? 452, 35 degrees. Up next, an inside look at how Britney Spears and Jennifer Lopez spent their holidays this year. Here are all your lottery numbers. Pick three numbers, 751, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 1038, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 318, 32, 30. 334 Texas two step 8 10 29 30 that bonus ball 33 and powerball 17 41 47 60 61 powerball 17 power play 3 Just about 456, a country music artist talks about high ticket prices for concerts. And Britney Spears shares her holiday memories. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Country music artist Zach Bryan dropped a live album called All My Homies Hate Ticketmaster on Christmas Day. At the same time, he put out a statement on Instagram complaining about high ticket prices to live shows, writing that working class people should be able to afford tickets. Ticketmaster has faced criticism in recent weeks, especially after the botched rollout of tickets for superstar Taylor Swift's upcoming Errors Tour. The company did not respond to Brian's album or post. Jennifer Lopez decked out her home for the holidays with a special theme this year. The 53-year-old singer shared photos from her holiday celebrations in the latest installment of her on the JLO newsletter. She centered her Christmas theme around the idea of the hummingbird. Lopez writing that to her, hummingbirds are messengers of love and a sign everything is going to be okay.
Britney Spears and her husband had a merry Britmas, spending the day in nature. Sam Asghari, a fitness trainer and actor, shared a video and photo of himself and Spears meditating while on a hike. He wrote on Instagram, My wife is really becoming a meditation guru, and I love it. Merry Britmas to you all. Celebrating birthdays today, Good Time star John Amos turns 83. Actor Timothy Chalamet is 27. That's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Andy Field, ABC News. 457, 34 degrees. The White House is blaming a political motivated stunt for migrants being bused to Washington, D.C. Why Governor Greg Abbott's office is saying it's not a stunt. What San Antonio police are saying this morning about a suspect after a man was hit and killed by a truck just west of downtown. Stephen Cavazos just walked into our studio. Another big travel day for people maybe returning home or going after their holiday visit. Stephen will give us an update and a check on the roads when we come back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Frustration building up around the country and around the San Antonio International Airport. Cancellation after cancellation. I'm Max Massey. We're going to have the latest from the U.S. Department of Transportation and Southwest. And I removed them to locations that self-identified as sanctuary cities that have the capability and the desire to help out these migrants. And so that's exactly what's taking place. The White House is condemning Governor Greg Abbott for busing another load of migrants to the nation's capital. Why the governor is calling the White House a bunch of hypocrites. And back here at home outside with live cam. Pretty cold right now, but we are going to see a warming trend in the afternoons, which is a welcome sight. Good morning, everybody. You've made it to Tuesday. It is December 27th. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy to have you back, Mark. Good to be back. This is that weird in-between week between Christmas and New Year's. You don't know what day it is. Right. You've been wearing the same sweatpants for the today? last three days. What is today? Tuesday, the 27th. Oh, okay, that's good. I tried to help you out there best I could. <laughs> Sarah you. Spivey is standing by. Good morning. Good morning. Nailed it, guys. Nailed it. Tuesday, 27th. Yeah, you know, things out there are cold. I think we're going to be having our last freeze here in San Antonio for at least the next seven to ten days. Temperatures right now at the airport officially at 34 degrees, but we've still got an hour or two before uh, we see the morning low for the day. So we'll dip to below freezing here, I think, around San Antonio. It's already below freezing in Bulverde, where it's 29 degrees, 30 in Hondo, 31 in Bandera, 31 in Uvalde, 27 in Kerrville, and 29 in Comfort. In spite of the cold start, we are going to see a steady warm up today. Temperatures will be in the 40s by 10, 50s around noon, 60 degrees for the high temperature, south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's the thing, though. Today is actually going to be the coolest day over the next 7 to 10 days. By New Year's Eve weekend, we'll be looking at highs in the mid-70s. We'll talk about that in a bit, but first, here's a look at the nation. You can see that there is a system that is once again starting to move across the Pacific Northwest. This is undoubtedly going to be causing some weather delays as folks uh, around the nation are trying to get back home. Our Max Massey is live right now at the San Antonio International Airport. Max, what can you tell us about delays going on uh, right now in San Antonio and, and about uh, what's going on at Southwest. Good morning, guys. Well, it's more cancellations than delays. I mean, take a look just past there. That's the Southwest gate and there's really just one line and a lot of those people who I talked to who are in line, that's kind of reflight after their initial flight was canceled. Now, I actually talked to one dad and he was telling me that his son's flight back to school, it was canceled to Indianapolis. And what he did was interesting. He didn't wait for Southwest. He said he basically scoured the airport lines and they found a direct flight from United. But what I was alluding to, take a look at the big board. This is like big board sports, but a lot more frustrating for local families. Cancellation after cancellation, counting 21 on here, all of them Southwest. And like we've been saying, more cancellations than delays. But guys, obviously Southwest having a lot of issues around the country, not only with flights, but also with customers. As you can imagine, families reaching out for help and their website, Southwest, they posted in part, quote, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience. Please know that we have all available hands on deck working to serve our customers. 
And this isn't just happening here in San Antonio, it's happening across the country. The United States Department of Transportation, they're now tweeting that they're investigating the airline, saying in part, quote, U.S. DOT concerned by Southwest's unacceptable rate of cancellations and delays and reports of lack of prompt customer service. The department will examine whether cancellations were controllable and if Southwest is complying with its customer service plan. So, guys, we're going to be here throughout the morning. Hopefully, these families get to where they need to go, and we'll keep you posted with any information that becomes available. Stephen, how's the traffic look out there? Thank you, Max. Hey, well, from the skies to the roadways, a completely different situation here on town. Let's get a look around Transguide 35 at New Braunfels. There's really not a lot to show you out there this early in the morning, uh, but keep in mind, as Sarah mentioned earlier, we do have a lot of folks that are traveling home from the hall for the holidays, so we know people will be making their way probably back into San Antonio a little bit later on this morning, if not sooner. But just take a look, 37 at Jones Avenue, there's really just some quiet roadways, a lot of pavement out there, and of course, a lot of green on the screen there. So perfect opportunity if you're still at home and maybe want to get an early start to your day right now would be the best time to take advantage of these roadways. But we did have one incident here along State Highway 151 and we're going to have more on that story in a little bit, but it was a pretty serious crash. It was lingering around for quite a while on the Transguide cameras, but just received an update from our friends over at Transguide. Looks like that has already cleared out. If you're going to be traveling into San Antonio, let's check out those travel times because it's still pretty pleasant on I-37. If you're traveling in those northbound lanes from Pleasanton, 28 minutes at this hour. About a half an hour usual drive time on US 90 if you're traveling in from Castroville. And that arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. But let's get you back in rotation here. US 90, there at State Highway 151 where we have that incident. As you can see, the roads are clear right now, but there are still several active road closures taking place. We're going to have more on that in the next few minutes. Mark, Sarah? Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a rollover crash early this morning left a man in his 50s trapped inside a pickup. It happened just after midnight at the intersection of Highway 151 and Ingram Road on the San Antonio's west side. Firefighters had to rescue the man after he was pinned between the driver door and the ground after rolling the truck into highway pillar. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. No other vehicles were involved in this crash. So far, no word on what caused him to crash. This morning, a man is dead after being hit by a truck while walking across the street just west of downtown. So far, SAPD says the suspect has not been found. San Antonio police called to the scene just after 7 last night on Buena Vista near South Colorado and South Smith Streets. When they got there, they found the man dead. He has yet to be identified by the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Witnesses told police after the truck hit the man, the driver took off. A body found in a burned vehicle hidden in some brush on the city's south side has now been identified. According to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office, the victim is 22-year-old Braylon Sampson. Her body was discovered back on December 10th near I-10 and I-37 exchange on the city's south side. San Antonio police say the vehicle was off the roadway when they found it. The medical examiner's office says Sampson died from burn injuries and smoke inhalation, the manner of... Her death is still being determined. Now to the crisis on the southern border. New information overnight about the buses of migrants dropped off outside Vice President Kamala Harris's home in Washington, D.C. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the reaction from the White House and Governor Greg Abbott. This morning, days after buses of migrants were dropped off in 18 degree cold on Christmas Eve outside the vice president's home in Washington, a spokesperson for Texas Governor Greg Abbott confirming the migrants came from Texas, saying they willingly chose to go. Many of the migrants, including children, were not wearing proper winter coats and clothing. Abbott's communications director saying the migrants signed a voluntary consent waiver in multiple languages. Abbott recently spoke to ABC's Martha Raddatz about the bus drop-off in multiple cities. And I removed them to locations that self-identified as sanctuary cities that have the capability and the desire to help out these migrants. And so that's exactly what's taking place. The White House calling the move on Christmas Eve a shameful stunt, but Abbott's office firing back, slamming the White House as a bunch of hypocrites. The back and forth comes as both sides await a ruling from the Supreme Court on Title 42, a pandemic era policy that allows the government to expel asylum seekers on public health grounds. The Biden administration argues the COVID emergency is over. Abbott says otherwise. Uh, whether it's COVID or some other issue, when you got people coming across the globe, without knowing at all what their health status is, that almost by definition is a public health risk. There's every reason to keep that in place. 
And now new figures show the extent of the crisis. Nearly 1.6 million people are now waiting for their asylum applications to be processed, a record number, with cases now seven times higher than a decade ago. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. It's 509 and 35 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, how a new AI tool could soon start a new trend of cheating in school. Up next, why a new committee of local doctors is drafting a new plan focused on preventing gun violence. Outside with live cam, Burr, baby, it's cold out there. 35 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, but some warm ups on the way. Please be patient, folks. It is coming. We'll finally get to go outside and feel some sun. A couple of days, we'll be right back. Just about 513, a San Antonio trauma surgeon who treated patients following two mass shootings is joining with other doctors in a fight to end gun violence. Dr. Ronald Stewart is part of the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma. The committee drafted these articles focused on preventing gun violence and death. So the goal is to present detailed research and create realistic solutions. The committee made up of doctors is recommending more extensive background checks, permits to purchase certain guns with high capacity magazines, and treating mass shootings as terrorism, allowing law enforcement more ability to predict, detect, and deter them. Work to understand and address the underlying root causes of violence while simultaneously working to make firearm ownership as safe as reasonably possible. So right now on KSAT.com, we have embedded the articles Dr. Stewart and other surgeons wrote surrounding gun violence. Time check 513, still 35 degrees. Coming up, why Elon Musk says he is providing more than 100 Starlink internet terminals to protesters in Iran. We'll also tell you why authorities in Tokyo are asking Apple to pay nearly $100 million in back taxes. Let's take a look outside with TransGuide. A little more cars on the road there. It's most likely going to be a busy travel day for the road. Stephen Cavazos is in, and he will let us know if any incidents pop up. This is Liz. She just stepped up to care for her mom, and she has questions. Luckily, Liz has CareWell. It's a one-stop shop for everything your loved one needs. Founded by actual caregivers and staffed by real caregiving specialists, they'll show you all the best brands and products, and they're trained to take your questions, even the embarrassing ones. With CareWell, you got this. Visit CareWell.com for 30% off your first auto ship order. Proudly supporting the Alzheimer's Association. Suffering from sinus congestion, especially at night? Try Vix Sinex for instant relief that lasts up to 12 hours. Vix Sinex targets congestion at the source, relieving nasal congestion and sinus pressure by reducing swelling in the sinuses. Try Vix Sinex. You go by lots of titles. Veteran, dad, hairstylist. So adding a student title might feel daunting. National University is here to support all your titles. National University, supporting the whole you. 517, welcome back. A professor warning that a new artificial intelligence tool could make it much easier for students to cheat. ABC's Morgan Norwood has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Elon Musk says he's activated nearly 100 Starlink terminals in Iran. The SpaceX satellite internet service could help Iranians get around the government's restrictions on internet access amid ongoing protests. Starlink works by connecting satellites with user terminals on the ground. And the tax man is coming for Apple in Japan. Authorities want the tech giant to pay $98 million in back taxes. Japanese officials say the company incorrectly exempted foreign tourists and resellers from a consumption tax on iPhones and other devices. A South Carolina professor is warning that students can easily cheat using a new artificial intelligence chatbot. He says that chat GPT can respond in seconds on a wide variety of subjects on information that looks like it was written by a human. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. All right, we're going to talk to Sarah about a temperature outlook coming up. But first, a look at traffic this morning. Stephen. Yeah, things have been pretty quiet on my end, guys. I can't complain about a lot. I was actually traveling back here to San Antonio from the Valley on Sunday. 
nice drive, but there were a lot of folks out there. Yeah. So let's check out the trans guide cameras right now, see what we can expect because really not a whole lot out there. As we give you a wider look there, you can see just maybe a few folks making their way on by, but uh, remember to drive safe this morning because as we mentioned, there are going to be a lot of folks maybe heading home for the holidays. So uh, just give them, give yourself plenty of time before you get the morning rolling here. Uh, but as I mentioned, not a lot to show you out here, just a lot of green on the screen, which is what we like to see, which means you can take advantage of these empty roadways. Go grab a cup of coffee or a breakfast taco and drop it off here for us at KSAT. But uh, no delays right now, maybe in the coffee line. But also be on the lookout because the road work will continue at least up until the end of the year. Let's talk about what's going on here along Worsbach Parkway because this has been current for quite a while. This road work is actually going to be wrapping up on New Year's Eve, at least a portion of it from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Now that's when drivers can expect to see alternating lane closures in both directions from Blanco Road to Thousand Oaks Drive. And so the work will continue into 2023. If you're at home, grab those phones right now and scan this QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That will take you to our KSAT traffic page. I updated the list of current closures that are happening right now and what you can expect for the new year. Miss Sarah Spivey. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, there shouldn't be any weather issues across uh, the state of Texas if you're traveling by road today or have loved ones uh, who travel by road today across Texas. Here's some good news. If you don't like the cold, take a look at the Climate Prediction Center's outlook for the next uh, six to ten days above average, not only around Texas, but also those areas that have been devastated by the winter storm out east, definitely going to be above average from December 31st to January 4th. Here in, T in San Antonio, our forecast highs are going to be in the 70s by Thursday, and over the weekend, we expect high temperatures in the mid 70s. So even though today we're going to be cooler than average with a high of 60 degrees, that'll be a distant memory by the weekend. Outside right now it is cold though. It's 34 degrees. Northwest winds at five miles per hour. Dew points in the 20s as well. It's below freezing in Kennedy and Pleasanton. Increase of Springs and Eagle Pass and Yavaldi this morning and as well as in the Hill Country in Kerrville. Even though in San Antonio it's 34 degrees, we've still got about an hour or so for temperatures to continue to fall and I think they will to near freezing here in San Antonio before sunrise. 28 in Bulverde, 33 in New Braunfels, 28 in Bernie, 30 in Hondo and 30 in Bandera. But with total sunshine, low humidity, our temperatures are once again going to uh, warm up pretty quickly here. By 9, we're going to be near 40 degrees, 44 at 10, and around noon, 53. Notice that winds are going to be pretty light today from the south at about 5 miles per hour. High temperature of 60 degrees this afternoon, right around six, uh, 3 and 4 p.m. this afternoon around San Antonio. But elsewhere in your neighborhood, it'll be 60 in Hondo, 59 in Canyon Lake, 60 in Kerrville, 64 in New Braunfels, and 64 in Catula. Let's talk a little bit about our weather setup. Again, across the state of Texas, nice and dry for any travel today, but across the uh, East Coast, they're still dealing with some lake effect snow there uh, in New York, and so that's going to cause some delays on the East Coast, and unfortunately, another system is moving in as we speak across the Pacific Northwest. This is going to be causing some issues across the uh, air, uh, air as well for air travel. Keep in mind too that um you know, you're going to want to check with your airline. Southwest is having a lot of issues if you're flying Southwest. As we take a look at the future cast, though, here in Texas and in San Antonio, tomorrow we'll have some morning clouds with a high temperature near 66. And then on Thursday, humidity is going to be on the rise. It won't necessarily be very humid outside, but you'll notice that the humidity will be a little higher. We're going to have some fog on Thursday morning. And as you can see, a few isolated showers are possible. Coverage should only be about 20 percent on Thursday and the high temperature in the afternoon should be near 72. Then Thursday afternoon, if you have plans to travel across Texas on Thursday afternoon into the evening, severe storms are going to be possible across East Texas. Notice not here in San Antonio, but across East Texas, we could see some severe storms Thursday afternoon into uh, Friday and then by Friday itself around San Antonio should just be mostly cloudy 72 degrees. I think this particular model is overdoing rain chances for West Texas on Friday. So again, a gradual warming trend for us through the
the week with only a, an isolated shower or storm possible on Thursday. And this week, this year, guys, is looking to be the second driest year on record for San Antonio. And we start next year with a small chance for rain on Monday. Look at those afternoon temperatures. Pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> and for people popping fireworks. Oh, gosh, it, you're going to have to be very careful right. because it is so dry out there in spite of the fact that we've had some dampness recently. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, ma'am. 524, 35 degrees on your Tuesday morning. Up next, a first look at David Tennant returns and new Doctor Who special, plus why SZA is topping the Billboard albums charts once again. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, seven, five, one, Fireball five, daily four, one, zero, three, eight, Fireball zero. Cash five, three, 18, 32, 33, 34. Texas two-step, eight, 10, 29, 30, 33. Let's look at those Powerball numbers, 17, 41, 47, 60, 61, Powerball 17, Power Play three. Welcome back, 527, one of sci-fi's most beloved small screen heroes celebrates a major anniversary. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. If she ever remembers me, she will die. Doctor Who returns. David Tennant makes a comeback as the titular Time Lord in a special series celebrating the 60th anniversary of the popular sci-fi program. Fans will also notice Neil Patrick Harris as the show's latest villain when the three-part event premieres next November. SZA retains her chart-topping throne. The R&B singer spends her second consecutive week on top of the Billboard 200 Albums chart. Her second album, S.O.S., is her first to hit number one and nabbed an additional 180,000 units. What do we say? You shouldn't make things up when we're talking about... Can you open the door, please? This is your latest look at M. Night Shyamalan's upcoming mystery, Knock at the Cabin. The film follows a family who are told by a group of intruders they must sacrifice one of their own to prevent an impending apocalypse. The thriller arrives in theaters February 3rd. In Hollywood, I'm David Dan. 528, 35 degrees. Big problems at airports across the country today, including right here in San Antonio. We'll show you what travelers can expect today in terms of delays and cancellations. Retail sales boom this holiday shopping season. We have new numbers and why it seemed to be a win-win situation for both shoppers and retailers. They're trying to fly home, but that's not looking like it's happening. A big mess still at airports this morning. Many are facing another round of cancellations and delays as folks still are trying to get back home after the holidays. We'll tell you how it's affecting San Antonio International Airport right now. A mess in the air, but really not on the roads across Texas. 35 degrees at 531. Sarah Spivey says, hey, we have a big warm up headed our way. She'll tell us about that in just a bit. And that will make a lot of folks smile. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is December 27th. Good to have everyone here this yeah, morning. Yeah. Enjoy your holiday. It definitely did. Rested and ready to go. Fantastic. Well, Sarah's here. Let's talk about when we could see those warmer afternoons around here. Absolutely. You know, you step outside this morning, it's still cold. <laughs> Big surprise there. All right, temperatures are close to freezing around San Antonio. You know, we've got about a 34 at the airport, 35 at Stinson, 35 at Kelly, and 33 at JBSA Randolph. But we are seeing freezing temperatures across the hill country and out west in more rural areas. It's 26 in Kerrville, 32 in Uvalde, 30 in Hondo, and 29 in Kennedy. Now, today is going to be a lovely day after the cold start. We'll already be in the low 50s by noon and near 60 degrees this afternoon under totally sunny skies. Well, winds gradually turn from the west to the south at about five miles per hour, but this is actually going to be the coolest we will be through the start of the new year. Coming up, I'm going to show you how warm those temperatures will go. We'll even talk about uh, what parts of the nation could be dealing with some travel woes today, as again, it's a very busy travel day. But like Sarah was saying, we don't anticipate any issues from the weather on the roads. However, your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, has an idea of what you can expect out there. Yeah, Steven. been pretty quiet, Sarah Spivey. As we get a look there at 37 at Jones Avenue, we did have one crash that was reported earlier. That was around midnight already cleared out. So some good news to report there, but you can see 410 at Jackson Keller. It is getting just a little bit busier. We do know a lot of folks are going to be traveling today, maybe back here to the Alamo City after a nice holiday break. But the good news is we know that school is still out, so we have that on our side. So we really won't see a whole lot of congestion out there. In fact, it's probably going to be a lot of green, but we know a lot of folks 
folks still have to commute here uh, around for work. So just be careful as you get the morning started. As you noticed, there are going to be several active road closures taking place, and we're going to have more on that a little bit later on. But if you plan to roll on in here to San Antonio, let's just take a look at these travel times. I 10 eastbound that journey from Bernie 24 minutes at this hour. No need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bolverde on 281 southbound. 27 minutes is what you can expect to the Alamo City. And right now, not too awful from New Braunfels. I 35 and those southbound lanes looking like a 25 minute commute. So get back here on Transguide. You can see there, Culebra, uh, La Quintera, pardon me, that there really wasn't a lot to show you. And that's still the case there at 10 at Hackberry, even at 35 at New Braunfels. Just the commute is getting just a wee bit busier. But we're going to be keeping a close eye out on the roadways. And of course, gas prices, we're going to have an update on that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Sarah. Stephen, thank you very much. Still a nightmare at many airports this morning. Delays and cancellations still causing a lot of holiday drivers headaches. Flights at San Antonio International are no different. So far today, 28 departures listed as canceled. Canceled. 25 arrivals are canceled. Yesterday, there were 35 canceled flights at the airport, 27 delays. That's according to flightaware.com. Of course, many more flights are being delayed today. That's right. So needless to say, if you're heading to the airport, be sure to check your flight status first. As CNN's Amy Kylie reports, some factors behind yesterday's air travel mess will be around again today. We're trying to fly home, but that's not looking like it's happening. Many U.S. air travelers are in for another rough day. Flight Aware says Southwest had canceled about 60 percent of today's flights before the day even started. It canceled roughly 70 percent of yesterday's and here's what's happening, according to the company. Obviously facing some operational challenges this evening with Winter Storm Elliott. Um, that has kind of moved on to include some, some challenges with our flight crews. The phone systems that the company uses uh, is just not working. They're just not manned with enough manpower in order to give the scheduling changes to flight attendants. Southwest isn't the only airline that's been canceling flights, and the weather's been affecting airports, too. Buffalo Niagara International says it'll remain closed today. Pittsburgh's airport is sending its snow equipment to help. We've been hit with a blizzard, uh, none that the likes of Buffalo has seen, uh, with those high winds and snow amounts. It's snowing again today in parts of the U.S., and the National Weather Service has issued several winter storm warnings. Some travelers are trying to make the best out of the situation. Go back home, hang out with the pops for a couple more days, you know, uh, call my boss and tell him I'm sorry. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Texas National Guard has installed more than two miles of fencing since the first part of the border fencing went up in El Paso area last week. That's according to a Texas National Guard spokesperson who says that more fencing is expected to be installed. As of Monday, approximately 22,000 migrants were sleeping in shelters and makeshift encampments across three northern Mexico cities, a number that is only expected to grow as Title 42 remains in legal limbo. Thousands of migrants now have to make the decision to either wait for the Trump era pandemic policy to be lifted or cross into United States illegally. Meanwhile, the number of asylum seekers in the U.S. has hit an all time record. 1.6 million asylum applications are pending in the U.S. immigration courts, the largest number ever recorded. U.S. immigration courts have experienced a seven-fold increase in asylum cases from fiscal year 2012 when there were just 100,000 cases pending. The asylum seekers are from 219 different countries and speak 418 different languages. Leading countries of origin include Guatemala, Venezuela, Cuba, and Brazil. The average wait time for an asylum hearing is more than four years. But in Omaha's immigration court, the wait time is now almost six years. A tragic house fire in Tennessee. Authorities in Cumberland County believe several people, including two children, have died in that house fire. Officials say the fire happened yesterday. By the time firefighters arrived on scene, the house was completely taken over by those flames. Four adults and two children are believed to have died in that fire. Their identities have not yet been released. Foul play is not suspected. To Maryland now, some kayakers being praised for helping rescue a pilot of a small plane that crashed Monday into a creek in Edgewater. Maryland State Police say there are reports the plane's engine began to sputter shortly after takeoff, then crashed into an icy creek. The pilot, 71-year-old Steve Couchman, was taken to a hospital and is expected to make a full recovery from non-life-threatening injuries. That crash is still under investigation. 
It's 538 and 34 degrees. Still ahead, we'll take you inside the training at U.S. Air Force bases and show you how security on every level affects base security as a whole. And next, new numbers are showing a big increase in shoppers over the holiday season. What analysts say caused more people to shell out more money for gifts this year. Outside with live cam, still very chilly this morning. 34 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. But hey, we're above freezing for now, which is kind of nice. And that warming trend does begin this week. Sarah Spivey is standing by with more on your forecast. In your morning consumer headlines, discounts and deals apparently swayed people into spending more this holiday season. MasterCard says holiday retail sales in the U.S. jumped over 7.5% compared to last year. The company looked at sales in store and online from November 1st to December 24th. They say this year retailers discounted heavily while consumers went hunting for the best deals and made trade-offs to stretch their gift-giving budgets to accommodate inflation. Preliminary figures show online sales grew over 10.5% compared to the same period last year. Black Friday was still the top day for shopping with sales up more than 12% from last year. And consumers also dined out more with in-person dining at restaurants up over 15%. A one-of-a-kind vehicle is going up for grabs, and it won't come cheaply. Bugatti's, and I don't know how to say this correctly, so I'm going to just guess, Chiron Profile is the company's last purely gas-powered supercar. has a 16-cylinder engine, can reach 236 miles per hour, meaning nearly as fast as Sarah Costa's normal cruise speed. <laughs> Sotheby's, which is auctioning off the vehicle, didn't comment to questions about an estimated value. However, a competitor company named Broad Arrow estimates the car could be worth up to 8 million dollars. The auction scheduled for February 1st in Paris. So mark your calendars and get your deposits ready. Are you insinuating that I speed mark? I am not. I am not. It was just just for that story. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> 543, 34 degrees. Up next, we go front and center with a special look inside the intense military and security training at U.S. Air Force's bases like the ones right here in Military City, USA. Checking trans guide. Roads are dry. Traffic is moving. We like that at 543. We'll talk to Stephen coming up. 546 right here in Military City, USA. U.S. Airmen are going through extensive training to provide security for U.S. Air Force bases stateside and abroad. So these men and women make up the branch's largest career field. Our Jonathan Colto takes us inside the training and explains how security on every level affects base security as a whole. Every job in the United States Air Force has a mission, but the responsibility of defending and protecting everything and everyone inside an Air Force installation lies on those who serve as part of the Air Force's largest career field, security forces. What we always tell the airmen is that nobody else on base can do their job without us, all the way down to the gate. If they can't check an identification properly and ensure the base security, then my individuals working at the medical facility cannot do their job. My individuals working at MPF cannot do their job without us. So we are the first base support. A military police's foundation is established here, learning everything from career field history to weapons training. Uh, so the journey is about 65 days long. Uh, it starts with them arriving out of BMT, uh, out of here at Lackland Air Force Base. Ma'am, what seems to be the problem? The courses gradually intensifying, taking their training from an interactive Drop environment. The Drop the weapon. Drop it. Drop it. Right to out in the field, simulating real-world scenarios. Right you need to calm down. Sir, drop your weapon. They're out here. Drop we give them a little weapon. bit of stress inoculation drop to kind of get weapon. their heart rate going, their drop adrenaline pumping, kind of simulated to what they're going to experience in a real-life scenario. And we get them in the houses with those real-time reflexive responses so they can react accordingly. But the training doesn't end here. And then after that, they'll move into their field tra training up at Camp Bullis, uh, just north of San Antonio. There are over 300,000 airmen in the United States. States Air Force, 40,000 of those are security forces. The schoolhouses here at Lackland graduate 5,400 airmen each year. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Now Jonathan says the Air Force is expecting some changes to its security force training. Defenders will see a 50% increase in field training scenarios at JBSA San Antonio Camp Bullis. This includes more time on firearms handling, field craft skills. The new curriculum, which is currently being implemented, will change the current training from three weeks 
to six weeks. Well, we won't make you wait that long for a traffic update. <laughs> That's right. Stephen Cavazos has what's going on on the road. You know, it would be a terrible thing to be waiting out on the roadways right now, but no congestion, no slowdowns. In fact, just some quiet roadways. Uh, it's been the trend all morning long, but we do have some uh, issues that were reported earlier. That's already cleared out. But you can see it's just getting a little bit busier there. 35 at Alamo is one of those spots where we'll tend to see traffic pick up a little bit more as we inch closer and closer to that 6 a.m. hour. But be on the lookout. We did have a roll over incident that was reported uh, by the San Antonio Fire Department near Gibbs Sprawl Road, not too far from Walsham Road. Uh, now, the good news is, according to the San Antonio Fire Department, there's at least one unit remaining on this scene. So that means that we could be seeing uh, an update here, a better update uh, in the next few moments or so. But we're unfortunately no trans guide cameras out in that area. So just be on the lookout for that. We give you a wide look at the map, and as I mentioned, it's just a lot of green out there, a lot of quiet roadways, but we know it's a big travel day, so if you plan on maybe fueling up before any big road trips, maybe back into town or back home for the holidays, uh, just keep in mind the average gas price here in Bear County, according to AAA, is $2.54. Around the state, we're looking at $2.66, and around the country, $3.10. And according to our friends over at AAA, that national average has actually held steady now for over a week. So, I mean, look. Looking at the numbers, they're a lot better than what we saw probably about a year or so ago. But back here on Transguide, the roads will likely look like this for a little while longer before a lot more folks wake up and get the day started early with us. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Hi. I know that. It, hi. Good morning. I know that if I see anything that's below two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. I feel instantly. Like I oh, you got to. You instantly. have to. Instantly. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got to save a little money that way. <laughs> so, hey, yes, a lot of people are going to be hitting the roads today. Good thing around Texas is we do not anticipate any weather issues around Texas uh, if you're driving. It's a different story, though, across the nation because as one winter storm leaves, another storm is arriving. The one winter storm that's leaving is currently bringing some lake effect snow to parts of New York. That's pushing off to the east, going to be causing some issues out there. And then here's where that next storm system is pushing into the Pacific Northwest, bringing heavy rainfall, even some snow across parts of California and Washington, as well as Portland. So unfortunately, uh, you know, the, if you do have any folks traveling by the air today, you're going to want to check with those airlines. There's a lot of issues, but it's quiet across the state of Texas. It is cold out there right now. Temperatures are in the 30s, 34 in San Antonio. Northwest winds at five miles per hour. Dry chapstick weather out there with dew points in the 20s. It's 27 in Kerrville, 29 in Uvalde, 30 in Carrizo Springs, 31 in Pleasanton, 28 in Junction, and 28 in Kennedy. Although it's 34 in San Antonio, temperatures may dip to freezing br briefly before we see the sunrise. 32 at Rio Medina, 30 in Hondo, 30 in Bandera this morning, and 28 in Bernie Stage Airfield. As we look at the future cast today, yeah, this is a moving image. There's just going to be total sunshine, and winds will gradually turn from the south this afternoon. As far as highs in your neighborhood, it should be 57 in Bernie, 57 in a Lotus, 59 at Simpson, 59 in Hondo, 59 in Bandera. Yesterday, we got up to 66 in San Antonio. We had a weak, cool front move through last night, and so today, the high temperature should be just below the average of 63, right near 60 degrees. Looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, bundle up this morning. Temperatures will be in the 30s. By noon, you'll only need the light jacket. 53 and mostly sunny around the lunch hour if you have any brunch plans. 60 degrees this afternoon, right around 3, 4 o'clock, so you won't necessarily need the jacket. So interestingly, our weather is going to be uh, driven by the dew point temperature, the humidity over the next couple of days. I mentioned that it's chapstick weather out there right now with dew points in the 20s. Watch what happens as our winds turn around to the south. Over the coming days, we're going to see dew points rise. Now you really start to feel the mugginess in the air once the dew point reaches 60 degrees. So although you may notice a little bit of humidity out there by Thursday, it's not necessarily going to be sticky and icky out there. However, that's going to help our temperatures rise because as the dew point rises, our temperatures are going to rise as well. Tomorrow's going to be an interesting day and that will start off with some clouds and in the 30s and then during the day tomorrow we should have clearing out west and sky staying cloudy out east so around san antonio high temperature in the mid 60s is likely but the further east of san antonio you go you'll be near 60 degrees and the further west you go you'll be near 70 because of sunshine so just looking at that forecast over the next few days an isolated shower is possible on thursday i'll be talking about that more coming up in the next half hour of gmsa and look at that new year's 
Eve weekend looks pretty pleasant. High temperatures are going to be in the 70s. And yes, even though dew points will be in the 50s, you won't necessarily feel that icky, sticky humidity outside. So it's going to feel perfect over New Year's Eve weekend. Thank you, Sarah. 553, 34 degrees. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick 3, 7, 5, 1, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 1, 0, 3, 8, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 3, 18, 32, 33, 34, Texas 2 stuff, 8, 8, 8, 10, 29, 30, bonus ball 33. And your Powerball number 17, 41, 47, 60, 61, Powerball 17, Power Play 3. Hey there, good morning. Coming up, the flight fiasco Southwest canceling thousands of flights this holiday weekend and thousands more today. Stranding passengers, some may be stuck for days. And now the federal government is launching an investigation. All of this a result of that deadly holiday weather killing more than 50 people. We will be live in Buffalo. That is a city paralyzed under four feet of snow as the West gets ready for a new storm system. Also, the latest on that newly elected congressman accused of making up parts of his life story. He's now admitting he, quote, embellished his resume, but he is insisting that he will take office next month. And it's our GMA gym. Get a head start on your New Year's resolution to get in shape with four of the country's top trainers. They will get you and us moving this morning. So stick around right here on GMA. And ahead in the next hour of GMSA, getting financial control is a popular New Year's resolution. We'll show you the best way to plan ahead so you can make the most of your money as far as best money moves. And flashing lights now at Loop 410 and Bandera Road. We'll have details with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Good morning, I'm Max Massa. We are in front of the Southwest Gate here at San Antonio International Airport. One of the few flights on time and leaving out of San Antonio for Southwest. We're gonna give you the latest update from Southwest and the U.S. Department of Transportation. And ahead this hour, West Side apartment fire leaves two people without a place to stay. What crews know so far about that fire coming up? Once someone gains access to a classroom with a high, with a high capacity magazine, semi-automatic, high velocity rifle, AR-15 styled firearm, The lethality is horrific. In the wake of several mass shootings we witnessed in 2022, a local surgeon is fighting to end gun violence. We'll show you what he's done so far. A high scoring victory for our San Antonio Spurs last night. We've got all the highlights. Plus, we'll tell you why tip off ended up being delayed last night. Sarah Spivey says we are experiencing a light breeze right now at 601, but this is probably the last time for the next several days we'll see freezing temps in the San Antonio area. How much things are going to warm up later this week. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, December 27th. Did you have a nice holiday? I did. Thank you. How was yours? It I, mean, was, I, I know you worked a lot. I, I was here. I yeah. went home to Corpus Christi for yeah. less than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, every time I turned on the channel, either it was you or Sarah Spivey <laughs> or Max Massey. You know, we, we enjoy it, though. We do. We you are do. family here. We are, you know. <laughs> You're ready for a nap, but you enjoy it. You know what? Hey, who isn't ready for a nap <laughs> at this right. point? And you know what? We are dealing with that light freeze, like yep. you said, Sarah. You know, we've had about five mornings in a row here where temperatures have been uh, at or below freezing. And around San Antonio right now, the official temperature is 33, but I think we could drop a degree or two here before sunrise. Otherwise, though, it's 27 in Bernie, 27 in Bulverde, 30 in Port SA, 31 in New Braunfels. 28 in Kerrville and 25 in Comfort. This morning is going to be the coldest morning for the next several mornings. We're starting a warm up trend. Today we'll be able to get to near 60 degrees, 44 at 10, 53 at noon, 60 for the high temperature. Winds will be turning to the south at about five miles per hour. But again, today is the coolest day over the next several days. By the weekend, we're going to be in the 70s. It's going to be gorgeous. And if you're planning on traveling across the state of Texas today on the roads, there should not be any weather other issues. However, that's a different story for most of the nation. Another system is moving in, affecting the Pacific Northwest. So once again, delays at airports and cancellations are expected on this busy travel day. In fact, our Max Massey is live right now at the San Antonio International Airport. Max, have you spoken to any Southwest customers? I know there's been a lot of cancellations with Southwest. 
Good morning, Sarah. We have been talking to a lot of customers, some very frustrated, some having some interesting choice words. A lot of people with some success stories, though. You know, not only did they have their Southwest flight canceled, but they went then booth to booth to booth, trying to figure out a flight, trying to get home. And we did hear some success stories. One traveler we talked to actually getting a $200 voucher from Southwest. But if you were at the airport yesterday, it was chaos. Lines around the door. But take a look now. That Southwest gate, it's empty. Now, the one flight this morning, one of the ones that we know is not canceled, that actually just departed a few minutes ago. And like we were saying, a lot of people who flew Southwest, who their flights were canceled, they had to go to other flights. So there are other flights going on today. And we've been showing you the big board through the morning. A lot of cancellations, specifically from Southwest. Customers complaining that they're forced to wait on the phone between two and four hours before getting a live representative to talk to them. Obviously, a very frustrating situation. But Southwest actually putting out a statement on their website today, you know, addressing all of the cancellations and really all of the chaos that's leaving families stranded across the country. So I'm going to read part of that statement to you. Now, the airline giving the advisory update in part saying with consecutive days of extreme winter weather across our network behind us, continuing challenges are impacting our customers and employees in a significant way. That is unacceptable. And our heartfelt apologies for this is just beginning. We're working with safety at the forefront to urgently address wide scale disruption by rebalancing the airline and repositioning crews and our fleet ultimately to best serve all who plan to travel with us. And guys, we talked to one traveler this morning, and he said he was in line for about four hours yesterday. He said, if you do have a flight coming up within the next few days, make sure to check the status before you even come to the airport. And then when you do come to the airport, he advised people to bring snacks, bring water, because if you're like him, you might be waiting here for hours. You're going to hear from that passenger, that traveler, coming up at 630. Steven? Thank you, Max. We'll continue to track that traffic trouble uh, back here actually out on the roadways for Tenet Bandera. You know, there's trouble out there in the air, but we are starting to see some of that continue here out on the roadways. For Tenet Bandera is along the frontage road. We have detected our first crash of the morning. Uh, looks pretty serious. Uh, we see several flashing lights and road flares out there, so just a very difficult spot to really zoom in on. But we are trying to get some more information confirmed from our friends over at Transguide. Hopefully everyone's doing OK out there, but you can see here on the map 410 eastbound at Bandera Road. State Highway 16 is where it's been reported. Thankfully, we're not seeing any delays or congestion just because the commute is still pretty quiet at this point, but we will watch that closely. Giving you a wide look at the map, thankfully there is not a lot else to show you out there, just quiet roadways, so a perfect opportunity maybe to travel into San Antonio. If you're traveling along I-10 and those westbound lanes from Seguin, it's still pretty green, 29 minutes at this point. Right now, 87, if you're traveling in from Lavernia and those northbound lanes, it's about 33 minutes to the Alamo City, and that drive time from our friends down in Floresville, 28 minutes. So just take your time this morning. This is an incident that we'll track closely as we get a closer look at trans uh, from this trans guide shot. You can see that uh, uh, some of the vehicles are actually uh, coming to a pause or a slowdown, I should say, but we'll watch it closely and have updates throughout the morning. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, crews trying to figure out what sparked an overnight fire at a west side apartment building. This began around 930 last night on Castroville Road, not far from South General McMullen and Highway 90. Firefighters say flames broke out inside one of the units and then spread into the one story building. No one was hurt, but two people are without a place to stay for the time being right now. They're being helped out by the Red Cross. Now to updated information on that boil water notice affecting subdivisions in Bear, Bandera and Kerr counties in a state from the Texas Water Utilities. They say the freezing temperatures this week caused a higher water demand leading to line leaks, which in turn resulted in a drop in water pressure on the screen. Now are the places impacted. The other counties affected are Kerr and Bandera. Nearly 2,000 homes are affected. Some areas are having the water tested as soon as possible, while others will have to wait until the pressure is restored before testing can begin. People who have any questions regarding the order are asked to call 1-866-654-7992 to read the full statement from Texas Water Utilities. Along with updates from each subdivision, head over to ksat.com. A security scare at the AT&T Center last night led to a lockdown and a delay in the Spurs versus Utah Jazz game last night. The game was delayed by 30 minutes after the AT&T Center surrounding parking lots and roadways 
leading to the county owned facility were placed on a lockdown. That lockdown happened just after 7 p.m. A BCSO spokesperson confirmed officials were alerted to a trash can that forced BCSO and NBA security to execute the shutdown protocol. It was later determined there was no threat and the lockdown was lifted. 608 right now, this San Antonio trauma surgeon who treated patients following two mass shootings is joining with other doctors to fight to end gun violence. Here he is, Dr. Ronald Stewart, part of the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma. He works here in San Antonio. The committee drafted articles focused on preventing gun violence and death. The goal is to present detailed research and create realistic solutions. Work to understand and address the underlying root causes of violence while simultaneously working to make firearm ownership as safe as reasonably possible. A committee made up of doctors is recommending more extensive background checks, permits to purchase certain guns with high capacity magazines, and treating mass shootings as terrorism. Right now on KSAT.com, we have embedded the articles Dr. Stewart and other surgeons wrote surrounding gun violence. We now turn to the crisis on the southern border and new information overnight about the buses of migrants dropped off outside the home of Vice President Kamala Harris over the weekend. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the story. This morning, days after buses of migrants were dropped off in 18 degree cold on Christmas Eve outside the vice president's home in Washington, a spokesperson for Texas Governor Greg Abbott confirming the migrants came from Texas, saying they willingly chose to go. Many of the migrants, including children, were not wearing proper winter coats and clothing. Abbott's communications director saying the migrants signed a voluntary consent waiver in multiple languages. Abbott recently spoke to ABC's Martha Raddatz about the bus drop off in multiple cities. And I removed them to locations that self identified as sanctuary cities that have the capability and the desire to help out these migrants. And so that's exactly what's taking place. The White House calling the move on Christmas Eve a shameful stunt, but Abbott's office firing back, slamming the White House as a bunch of hypocrites. The back and forth comes as both sides await a ruling from the Supreme Court on Title 42, a pandemic era policy that allows the government to expel asylum seekers on public health grounds. The Biden administration argues the COVID emergency is over. Abbott says otherwise. Uh, whether it's COVID or some other issue, when you have people coming across the globe, without knowing at all what their health status is, that almost by definition is a public health risk. There's every reason to keep that in place. And now new figures show the extent of the crisis. Nearly 1.6 million people are now waiting for their asylum applications to be processed, a record number, with cases now seven times higher than a decade ago. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Topping your morning consumer headlines, more workers are returning to restaurants in the U.S. The COVID pandemic led to huge cuts in food service jobs, but recent Labor Department numbers show they're nearly back to pre-pandemic levels. Last month alone, restaurants and bars across the country added around 62,000 jobs. Holiday sales are up more than expected this year. MasterCard spending Pulse says shoppers spent 7.6% more this year than they did last year. So spending at restaurants and on clothing leading the way. Experts also say inflation helped push some shoppers to wait till later in the season, hoping to score deals on purchases. 6 11 33 degrees. Much more to come on GMSA, including the dramatic rescue caught on camera. We'll show you how some kayakers saved a pilot whose plane crashed into an icy creek in Maryland. And just ahead, have students found a new way to cheat on assignments? Why a South Carolina professor says yes. Sarah Spivey says we are hovering at freezing temps this morning, but this is the last time in the next few days that we'll experience those freezing temperatures. Things will warm up. She'll have our forecast when we come back.